Hello and welcome! Modern optical mice are reliable and nice, but they are USB and won't work on serial ports. So to make them talk to a vintage PC with a serial port, we need a board that will translate USB to serial. There are several open source projects that can do that. The ones I have used myself are the USB mouse to serial project that uses a Raspberry Pi with a USB to serial adapter connected to it, and Calamity Lime's USB serial mouse adapter, which is a DIY adapter based on a Raspberry Pi Pico. I made a video about this adapter a while back, so if you are interested in building one yourself, feel free to check out that video. Both projects are good options, but they are not as convenient as an actual serial mouse. In this video, we are going to look into what it takes to actually convert a modern USB optical mouse into a serial mouse that works just like a serial mouse from back in the day. Ok, let's start from the basics. How does a serial mouse work? A serial mouse is a fairly simple device. It just uses two pins to talk to the computer, RTS, pin 7, and RX, pin 2. The RTS pin is used by the mouse driver as a reset handshake. The driver lowers RTS momentarily to force a mouse reset and expects a data reply within 14 milliseconds. For the standard Microsoft compatible serial mouse, the reply is the character M or 4D in hex. The RX pin is used for a data transfer. This is done in 1200 baud, 7 data bits, 1 stop bit and no parity, also known as 1200 7N1. The data bits that get transmitted use a specific protocol which is well documented. The cute mouse driver documentation explains the most common ones in great detail. The voltages of the serial port conform to the RS-232 standard. So logic high is in the range 3 to 15 volts and logic low is between minus 3 to minus 15 volts. Most microcontrollers, like the Pico, use 0 to 3.3 volt logic levels. A common way to convert these levels to RS-232 is using the MAX-232 family of ICs. This is exactly what Calamity Lime's adapter is using. Ok, this sounds fairly straightforward. We just need to connect a MAX-232 IC to the Pico, then the Pico to the USB mouse and we're done, right? Well, it's not so easy. The main issue with this project is that we have to do this with no external power. And the problem is that the serial port, unlike the USB port, has no power pins. But how did old serial mice get powered then? Well, they used to draw power from the logic pins, mainly RTS and DTR. But these logic pins provide very little power. You can only use up to 5 mA per pin in most cases. But the Pico alone consumes a lot more than this, around 20 mA. And a typical USB mouse about 10 mA when idle and up to 30 mA when active. So both will consume at least 30 mA and up to 50 mA which is way over our budget. So let's start by trying to reduce the Pico's power. The Pico has some nice low power sleep modes, but from what I can tell, the RTC API works with seconds, not milliseconds. But we need to sleep for milliseconds because we are pulling the USB mouse at least every 25 milliseconds. So our next best option is to underclock and undervolt it. Underclocking to 48 MHz using the set sysclock 48 MHz function seems to give us more than 50% savings. This function sets everything to run off the USB oscillator, so it turns off the PLL, saving almost 1 mA on top of the underclocking savings. So we are now consuming only 8.9 mA. If we reduce the voltage to 0.90V, down from the default 1.10, we can further reduce the current to 7.4 mA. Oh, by the way, if you are aware of any more tricks to reduce the Pico's consumption even further, please let me know in the comments. Ok, now that we reduced the Pico's consumption to about half of our 15 mA total budget, let's focus on the mouse. We first need to look for the most power efficient mouse. I tried using an off the shelf USB doctor device to measure the current, but mine has a resolution of 10 mA which is not enough for our needs. So I made a simple USB male to female adapter that exposes the power pins so that I can use a multimeter to measure the current. This Logitech B100 mouse consumes 8.4 mA idle and up to 23 mA when active. This is way over budget, but most of the power is consumed by the LED, so let's add a resistor in series to reduce its consumption. If the LED is not bright enough, the camera on the mouse can't see the surface, so the mouse cursor won't move. The largest resistor I could use that would still work with this mouse is 1 kilo ohm. Now it consumes 6.4 mA on idle and 8.3 mA when active, which is still too high. This older Microsoft Basic Mouse version 2.0 consumes 3.4 mA idle, 
9.8 mA when active and up to 15 mA when the LED is at maximum power, which looks more promising. This mouse works with a 2.2K resistor in series with the LED. And after the resistor mode, it consumes 2.7 mA on idle and 5.4 mA max. This is great as we are within our budget. 7.4 mA for the Pico, plus 5.4 mA for the mouse, is 12.8 mA which is less than our 15 mA total budget. Ok, now that we tuned our most power consuming parts, let's focus on the circuit. And here is the first problem that we encounter. Initially, when the PC boots and before we run the mouse driver, all three pins of the serial port that we are planning to use for power, RTS, TX and DTR, are low, at around minus 10 volts. When the mouse driver runs, it raises RTS and DTR to high, around plus 10 volts, and will immediately use RTS for the mouse reset handshake. But this happens so soon after RTS and DTR are high, that we can't just wait until they are high to power the Pico, because it won't have enough time to boot and reply to the handshake. So we must power the Pico as soon as the serial port is connected, even when RTS and DTR have a negative voltage. For this to work, we're going to build a rectifier circuit similar to what is used for the full bridge rectifier that converts AC to DC. But now we have three cables, RTS, DTR and ground, so the circuit looks like this. When RTS and DTR are negative, the positive rail is at 0 volts and the negative at minus 10 volts. When RTS and DTR are positive, the positive rail is at plus 10 volts and the negative at 0 volts. So regardless of the state of RTS and DTR compared to ground, we have a stable voltage difference of 10 volts, which we can use to power our circuits. And here comes the second problem. Each pin can only provide 5 mA, but when the mouse driver is activated, only RTS and DTR have a positive voltage. TX has a negative voltage of about minus 10 volts, but two pins are not enough. The Pico and the mouse need 12.8 mA, so we need to get power from the TX pin as well. Well, I chose to use a voltage doubler circuit using a 7555. The positive power input of the IC is connected to ground, and the negative at TX, which is at minus 10 volts. The output of the circuit is a positive voltage, which we can connect to the positive rail of our circuit with a diode. So in this way we can use power taken from the TX pin alone to contribute to our budget on the positive rail. Ok, now that we took care of the power budget, let's look into the third issue. We need to convert the logic output of the Pico to RS-232 voltage levels. Normally we would use a low power MAX-3232 IC, but I tried that and it consumes at least 5 mA, which is way beyond our budget. So instead I'm using a simple circuit that makes use of the existing voltage levels that are available in our circuit. That is 5 volts from the positive rail, and minus 10 volts from the TX pin, which should be good enough. It is based on a common op-amp, the LM358. We connect its negative power pin to TX and its positive power pin to the positive rail. This IC works with a supply voltage range of 32 volts, so it is perfect for our use case. The Pico's GPIO pin connects to the inverting input of the op-amp, so that the signal gets inverted just like it does in a MAX-232. This generates RS-232 compatible voltage levels and only consumes 1.5 mA. Finally, we need to make sure that both the mouse and the Pico don't get damaged by over voltage, so we need to limit the voltage to around 5 volts. I tried using a linear regulator like the 7805 and even a mini back converter, but neither work very well. When the devices drew current from the rail, the rail voltage dropped so low that they stopped working correctly, cutting off power. I got the best results using a 5.1V Zener diode to clamp the voltage between the positive rail and ground, and then simply connect both the Pico and the USB port to the positive rail. A Zener diode protects the devices from over voltage and won't consume power when the voltage drops below 5.1V. One last issue is that when we plug in the serial port, the positive rail takes some time to get to a stable voltage. This would crash the Pico and the firmware wouldn't boot. So I added a simple timing RC circuit that pulls the Pico's reset pin low for several seconds to allow for the voltage levels to stabilize. Ok, let me show you the prototype. The prototype board is connected to the computer via the serial port and to the mouse via the micro USB header. There is no external power whatsoever. After we turn the system on, the Pico should turn on after a short delay. We can tell that it is on by checking the LED. It should pulse, but the light is deliberately very dim to save power. 
When we move the mouse, the Pico parses the USB data and makes the LED blink even faster. Ok, let's load the cute mouse driver. The mouse is detected on the second attempt. I am not sure why it is not detected right away, it might be because of the flaky connections on the prototype board. Now let's try some games. And yeah, the mouse works perfectly. The next step is to replace the prototype board with a small PCB that can fit inside the mouse. I have already designed it and I'm currently having it fabricated, so I'm just waiting it for it to arrive. So please stay tuned for a follow up video with the latest updates. Ok, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching and goodbye.